Okay, hello everyone. Now that we have an idea of some of the basics about vectors, we want to move forward and talk about some of the operations that we can perform with vectors and on vectors themselves. Now, in general, there are really only four things that you need to be able to do with vectors, both algebraically and geometrically. One, you need to add them together. Okay? Now, in addition to that, there's subtraction, but subtraction is just going to be the addition of the opposite. So we're not really going to consider subtraction a different operation. Okay, then you also have scalar multiplication. Okay? You have the scalar product, which is something that is completely new to all of you. We're also going to talk about the vector product next year when we actually start the higher level course. And we're also going to take a look at something called projections, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the next chapter. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the first one, which is addition. Now, if we go ahead and addition, one of the things that is going to be just so important for you to do to be able to understand how things are working from a geometric sense as well as from an algebraic sense is to play with the demos that are on the website. If you go ahead and play with that, you'll be able to see exactly how everything is working so that you have a really firm idea visually what the algebra is being, how the algebra is being represented from a geometric point of view. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. So uh, you, you take a look at that on your own time. But let's just go ahead and just give everyone an idea, first of all, how we actually add vectors together. And the thing that we need to really ask is, what is the result of adding two vectors? The result of adding two vectors has to be another vector. Okay? It has to be another vector. So let's go ahead and write that there. The result must be another vector. Okay? And what we're going to call that vector is we're going to call that vector R. So if I just go ahead and say that I have two vectors, A and B, if I add them together, I'm going to call this R. Now, why am I going to be calling that R? It's because we're going to represent, we're going to let R represent the result or the resultant vector. Okay? There you go. So, let's go ahead and see now how do I go about geometrically describing this addition so that it actually shows the resultant vector. Okay, now here we go. We got two vectors here, A and B. Okay, I just went ahead and put in uh, the endpoints as well, so that if I wanted to go ahead and write it, I could write it this way. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and add these two vectors. And how do you add two vectors geometrically? Well, what we need to do is say, for example, we start off here at A. Now, notice that A starts here and it goes here. And then B vector is actually starting here and going here. Now remember that what we said is that if you go ahead and take a vector, any two vectors are going to be equivalent to each other so long as they have the same magnitude and the same direction. So what I'm going to need to do then in order to actually show this geometrically is I need to go ahead and move this vector and move it here. Okay, this is now going to be my new B vector. Now, notice that the endpoint is different here because this is no longer B. I'm just going to rename it and call it A. And then this point over here, let's just go ahead and still call it C. Okay, so notice though, I haven't changed the vector B except for the fact that I need to go ahead and change the notation which represents the endpoints. So, what I can do here then is that I can go ahead and say that this is exactly the same situation as OA plus AC. Okay. Now, with this part over here, of course, I still have the vector A and the vector B, so nothing's changed with regards to this equation here. Now, what is the resultant? Now, if I start here, I go here, then I start here, and I go here, the resultant vector is going to be a vector that starts from the original starting point and ends at the last end point. Okay, so what that means then is that if I go ahead and show this vector r, that right there is the vector r. Okay? 
Now, if I wanted to go ahead and describe this vector, there's a couple of ways that I could describe this vector. I could actually go ahead and also write it as the vector a plus b, because of course those two are equivalent. Now, one of the things that we want to go ahead and take a look at is that if we go ahead and actually use this form of notation to represent the vector addition, notice that what happened is that it's really o to c. So what I'm coming out with is o to c. And that is the resultant vector, which is plainly clear, which is very evident and clear to see from this diagram here. Now the nice thing about this here is that this is actually going to go ahead and be able to show you that if I go from O to A and then A to C, of course the resultant is just going to be from O to C. And then basically then, these two, which are common endpoints, this endpoint and the starting point, they basically disappear and you just come out with the overall resultant vector starting from this endpoint here, this starting point here and ending at that endpoint there. So there's an advantage to this here, in that you can see very clearly what the resultant is going to be based upon the endpoints. Now, the one thing that we need to go ahead and also take a look at here, I'm going to erase this part here, is that if we wanted to go ahead instead and move this here, let's say for example we wanted to move A here, or I'm sorry, move A here, would that have made a difference? Or would I have had, if I had moved this vector B and moved it here, would that have made a difference? The resultant would have been the same, but the position of the vectors would not have shown you the triangle that would have been formed through the vector addition. So it's going to be important to actually go from the starting point, ending point, starting point, ending point, and have that kind of configuration to see the geometric relationships that are contained with the algebraic representation of vector addition. Okay, so I'm hoping that we can also go ahead and see that vector addition is commutative because if I went ahead and started from O to A, oh sorry, if I went from O to B, like here, and if I put O to A, which would be that, where this is A, okay, so then notice then what would happen is that my resultant vector is going to have exactly the same magnitude and it's going to have exactly the same direction and therefore those two are going to be equal. Therefore what we can say then is that the vector addition of A plus B is going to be the exact same as the vector addition of B plus A. Okay? Now one of the things that's going to be important for us to consider as well is what is the geometric interpretation of, say for example, adding three vectors together, A, B, and C, and again, I invite you to go ahead and take a look at the applet on the website. So, there you go, we started off with our first operation with vectors, which is going to be vector addition. Remember that the result must be another vector, and if you play with the demo and the applet on the website, you'll be able to see that vector addition is indeed commutative, it is going to have different representations based upon the way that you use your vector notation, but the geometric interpretation is going to be exactly the same. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and take a look exactly at what the geometric interpretation of the sum of three vectors are. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these operations with vectors and focusing on addition, and we'll see how you do. Okay, so we'll see you in class, and we'll see you later. Bye.